Another thing, who at times has ever felt mentally stuck at tournaments? Like, okay, I'm drawing a blank or I'm not feel like I can do what, I, what my coach has been drumming me for years, right? Or months on end. Very simple thing just to remember. This happens. I've been in that situation before as well. We draw those mental blanks. Let's say for argument's sake, we're fencing. Ted hasn't competed in two or three years. He knows he's a good fencer, but I do simple attacks and he tends to miss the stop hits. I make that hit, right? All of a sudden, his strongest asset is going down the tube. So if you're a pistol gripper with an awesome pair of repost, your problem could be you're getting the parry, but you keep missing the repost, right? What to do? That tends to really shut us down then because, oh my God, I, uh, I'm more concerned my, about my biggest problem, my biggest success than anything else there. Three ways to manipulate opponent. Just remember them. Like if you're drawing blanks, just always go back to that. One way, you can manipulate your opponent with the tip. So Ted literally either trying to make a hit on the hand or anywhere else, so he can feint to the hand, right? It, oh shoot, I'm getting excited. So if you feint towards me, I disengage, continue pressuring. You continue pressuring, right? So anything like that, that's manipulating with the tip. So you're literally giving some threat to your opponent. Let's say that's not your day. Another way is using the blade, right? So Ted can take my blade. He can make a beat to my blade. He can invite me for that pair of repost, right? So that's one way, another way to manipulate your opponent. So when you just break them down, you're gonna start getting some thoughts. What can I do with the blade? The third thing is giving a target. That's the one that I see the least in competitions. When people get very nervous, we only start thinking about what to, you know, how to press the button. Don't be shy to give a target to your opponent, right? So if I'm moving and Ted gives me a target of some sort, I might be just willing enough to go dumbly for the hit. Now, do any of those three things work on its own? No, but there's a concept called tactical wheel, right? Where we use everything in moderation. There is no exact concept like some of us maybe heard this as kids, you know, you make two feints, you attack on the third. It's a very good concept for a little kid. It's a basic tactical wheel. For us, there is no particular number, but just have a general feel, right? You no, know, making sure you have enough salt, enough pepper, enough sugar kind of deal. Not too much of everything, so there is a mystery over what's going to happen. Okay, so if you don't remember, if you draw blanks, always remember, I can manipulate with the tip, with the blade, or with the target. Let's get a little bit into positioning on the strip. Okay, so Ted was kind of giving a little bit of a lecture on that subject yesterday. I want to touch on it more. Let's say Ted is down in the score. He wants to make a comeback. Here's what was happening basically in every bout yesterday and with the first day we were doing competitions. Ted is down, he starts to pressure me. Right around here, I start creating resistance. Ted potentially sees an opening and goes for it, and we make a nice double. And that's it. Usually that leads to a loss, because now what was 13-12 became 14-13. Now the whole psychology is different. Here's the anatomy of approaching important touches, okay? So, on guard, Ted will carefully, with very small steps, so you see he's already too close. I can already parry without any commitment and inflict something on him. He's gonna carefully work me down. Right around here, this is where most people begin to do some sort of resistive actions. From here to here, there becomes some resistance. What you need to start understanding, this is not the time to attack. Again, another soccer move. A little bit of resistance, a little bit of challenges, and you sell out. I call it selling out. Because you haven't put in any work, you're just trying to take a gamble. See if you can jump from one edge of the cliff to the other without falling down, okay? What Ted's gonna get here is he's gonna start working. So whatever the amount of time it took you to get your opponent to here, this is only when you start fencing. So now, Ted is purely working to make sure that if I do a stupid reach under, he can get a stop hit. If I decide to crack, he can get a stop hit. If I decide to surge of some sort, he can get a stop hit. 
right? So he's still being very defensive. If all of this happens and he eventually gets me driven all the way to here with at least one foot off, this is when you can begin potentially to think to execute an attack, all right? So right away back on two meter line. Right here, people can't see, but we just, let's say, we'll imagine that this is the end of the strip, so everybody can see me there, right? So if I'm already over the line, one suggestion, do it again at your own discretion. Do not go for the toe hit. If you're the attacker, or if you're the one being placed on a two meter line here, do not go for this toe hit. Just way too risky. I keep using this term again, but it's again another one of those soccer bets. It's kind of like, you get it all, or you look like a complete idiot if it doesn't work. It's just a pure gamble. If you have potential other options, keep fighting. If you get to a point where your weapon is now falling out of your hands because you're so tired, I don't know, Godspeed, do what you can. Right? <laughs> so that's kind of how you look to pressure the opponent down. Don't look to sell out too soon. Most of you yesterday I watched sold out right around this area. That's where it happens. So take a look today. When you're down, and let's say... It was unsuccessful, you, you got another point against, you just pause and take a look, where are you located on the strip? If that happened somewhere over here, that means it's way too soon. If anybody attacked you while pressuring, this is the area where you gotta get your hit because you're funneling them towards your strongest hit, essentially, right?